clear prop. All right, guys, welcome back to the cockpit. Going through the checklist here, so engine start was good. Everything's good. We don't have fuel pressure reading right now. We'll check that on the run-up. It should pop right up. Uh, lights are all where I want. The Onyx Master's on. Transponder, Squawk 1200. We'll get it weather real quick. 119 or 57. Wind, zero, one, zero, at three knots. Visibility, more than one, zero. Sky condition, clear, below one, two, thousand. Temperature, Six Celsius. Dew point four Celsius. Altimeter three zero two three inches of mercury. We're gonna to go to Daniel Field today in Augusta, Georgia. I'm trying something new with the audio today. I've literally just got a microphone in my headset, so we'll see how that works. Cause the audio in this plane, I just get so much terrible feedback, radio noise from the strobe and the popping and everything, and it's impossible to edit in post. So we're trying something new today. Back to the checklist. Uh, ream calc, even though we're not flying IFR, I always do this just to get in the habit of doing it and never skip it. Ream is available. Autopilot, we'll check it. Okay, that seems to be working. Trim should shut it off and should work. Trim, shut it off, and it worked. So this is actually what we're gonna talk about today, the GFC 500 Garmin Autopilot. Uh, we just got this installed. Um, we'll go over some of the, the cool features of it. I'll walk you guys through how to use it, things like that. I'll tell you guys what the total cost of the installation was uh, for that. So, parking brake, tow brakes, gyro instruments. I feel that parking brake, we're not, not using it. It's off. Gyro instruments are on. No red flag. Everything else is good. 3023. 0023. We'll do a run up right here. In case something's wrong, we'll put it right back in the hangar. Okay, brakes are holding. Engine instruments are in the green. Fuel pressure did come back on. Two left. Healthy drop. Two right. Good recovery. One left. Healthy drop, one right, good recovery. A little more juice for the prop, feels good. A little bit of warm oil in there, there's the RPM. Let it recover, there's the manifold pressure. One more, we're gonna check the oil pressure. She dropped, that's a really good run up. Nice and easy come back. There it is, okay. Ammeter was good, left and right bags, prop, 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 and throttle were good. Before takeoff checklist, flight controls. We're gonna check these again before we take off. Dual selector handle, left tank, it's what we have written down. Laps will set here and the rest will do at the runway. All right, one, two, three, zero, one, two, zero point seven for approach. Let's get rolling, we'll test the brakes. Good roll, brakes work. Somerville traffic, Mooney, seven, nine, or eight, one, one. At the rear hangars, taxi to the ramp, Somerville. So traffic, let's land you clear. Runway two, four, Charlie will be taxiing hold short of runway six, Somerville. Okay, so they're, uh, Taxi to six, so that's where we're going. Nice long taxi. And on days when we have a nice long taxi, I like to uh, get the video rolling while I'm on the ground because the cameras just don't last. When I plug them in, they die. So, a um, little bit of uh, a news update. So, been a while since I made a video. Uh, a lot has happened uh, since my last one, I think. Um, I guess the biggest news would be this autopilot install, the GFC 500 install. And um, I am a officially licensed commercial pilot. I passed my commercial pilot check ride, which uh, just felt amazing, if I'm honest. <laughs> I actually went through the whole entire check ride, um, did really well, I thought, on the oral, clear left, clear right. The call here, right and left. Somerville traffic, maybe 7, 9, or 8, 1, 1 on the ramp, taxi on the runway 0, 06, Somerville. And you know, an hour long a check ride takes a couple hours. So a couple hours of the check ride, did well on the oral, did awesome on all my maneuvers, did my power off 180 first to get that out of the way, uh, nailed it, it was just great, great. Pilotage, dead reckoning, lost, uh, you know, navigation procedures, all that stuff, did really well. And then on my chandelles, which was the last maneuver of the day, which I've never had a problem doing chandelles, ever. I did my first chandelle on the left, it was fine. Did my next chandelle to the right, and it was sloppy. It was described to me as barely acceptable. Like, it was within the, the ACS standards, barely. But I knew, I was like, oh my god. I'm like, if this guy didn't like me, I was like, he could probably ding me on that, and I'd have nothing to say. So after I did the chandelle, he says, well, how'd you feel about that one? I was like, that, honestly, I did not feel good about it. 
And he just left it at that and didn't tell me anything. And then we got back to the airport, landed and all that. And he was like, well, he said, give me a debrief on what happened up there. And I told him exactly what happened, what I did wrong on the Shandell, how I could have improved it. Um, and he's like, well, he's like, you know, it was still within standards and you, um, you know, you know how to make it better. So his exact words were the aviation gods are shining on you today because you're, you just passed your commercial pilot. And it was emotional because I was like, oh, thank God, you know, if you guys are pilots and you know, when you pass a check guard, there's so much work that goes up into it. And there's always that big question mark, you know, it's, it's kind of subjective, it's supposed to be objective, but you know, you just never know. It's very stressful. Summer Road Traffic Tucker Bank, Union 869, Yankee, second off runway 6, right close traffic, Summer Road. Yeah, so we'll get up in the air, we'll finish the video. Today we're going to Augusta, Georgia uh, for no reason. It's just a nice little flight out there. They have cheap fuel and full service. It's a nice airport, get a cup of coffee. So we'll get here, hold short, complete the pre takeoff checklist, and then we'll uh, get airborne. Holding short 06. Alright, mixture coming in. Prop is full, cow flaps, good, power boost closed, electronic fuel pump coming on, nav lights, beacon, nav light, landing lights, seat belts are on, door checked, window closed. Traction lever, we have clearance, hit the toggle button, that's an autopilot feature. Who's flying? I'm the only one on the plane that I'll be flying. Expect the engine to die on takeoff. When it does die, I'm going to say there it is and push forward, find a place to land. Um, but after I check my engine instrument, instruments, if I look back at my airspeed and do not have airspeed, or I'm not at about 65 miles an hour, um, I know something is wrong. Nice long runway today. I'll do that about the thousand foot markers. We'll come to a stop. Something goes wrong in the air. We'll take it straight ahead. We got a field to the right um, that's usable for a belly landing. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to consider a turn back until at least a thousand feet. Uh, any questions? No, no one else is in the cockpit. All right. Final check of this. I see that departing traffic climbing like a banshee. It is chilly today. We are light. I think I'm going to get some good climb right today too. So let's so final check. Like Comanches, right crosswind six. Somewhere to go. Somerville traffic, Mooney, 79 or 811, taking off runway 06, Somerville. Alrighty, so we're expecting that engine to die. Final's clear, base is clear, but we already checked that. Ready to go? Here we go. 06. Somerville traffic, Twin Command, TN869, Yankee, right downwind, runway 6, Somerville. Air's full power, RPM look good, engine fits in the green, the engine feels good, airspeed's way alive, holy moly. We are <laughs> rotation speed of 500. Positive brake gears up. Holy cow, you guys. Climbing at 1,800 feet a minute, 1,900 feet a minute. At our cruise climb speed, too. Holy cow, that's 1,000 feet. <laughs> that's the best performance I've ever got out of this thing. That was amazing. Holy cow. Fuel pump, lay light coming off, flaps are up. Thornville traffic, Mooney 79811 departing off the upwind for 06, headed out to the northwest, Somerville. Boop. Boop. Alrighty. Making our left turn out. Everything's looking and feeling really good. What a beautiful morning. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. Direct to canter, activate, hit the nav button. Autopilot's coming on, IS mode. I want the nose down just a hair. Alright, we are on a collision course with this guy, so I'm going to deviate to the right a little bit. Silver traffic, 203 Bravo Lima, we are 10 miles north of Silverville and bound runway 24, Silver traffic. Bravo Lima, this is Mooney 811, we're deviating to the right, we see guys on the ADSB. Alright, sounds good, we'll be uh, looking out for you. Roger that. And Mooney, we got you on ADSB, but we don't got you inside, that's on our eyes, so we got you inside there. Roger that. All right, so climbing up to 4,500 today, and then we're going to pull it way back and just putt all the way to Augusta because um, we're building hours today. We have no reason to get there fast. We're in about five or six gallons an hour right now doing, oh, we got a headwind. We're doing 107 knots true, 88 knots across the ground. Perfect. Okay, guys, so... This is the Garmin GFC 500 autopilot system. We have everything except for the yaw damper, so we do not have the, the third axis, the, the rudder uh, servo, but in a general aviation aircraft with one engine like this, you really don't need it. It does everything you can imagine it can do. Um, you guys just saw there when we took off, we engaged nav mode, so it'll follow a, nav, you know, a navigation course. It's really smooth. 
follow a heading, push that button to sync your heading. We'll fly approaches down to minimums, uh, track mode, autopilot engagement. It has a flight director. I've got it set up for dual queue on the G5. Um, again, no yaw damper. The level button, you guys aren't aware. Um, as you're, if you're flying, no matter where the airplane is, how it's doing, you hit the level button and it will level the wings and uh, maintain your altitude. So it's a nice little safety feature. If you were to get disoriented, something like that, you could engage that button and uh, level the aircraft. On the right side is your vertical. So this was your, uh, your lateral, your uh, autopilot engagement functions here, and then your vertical on this side. So you have uh, the wheel to change your vertical speed, or you can also change your altitude by, uh, by tens if you're not uh, using any of these vertical functions. You have IES mode, VNAV, uh, vertical speed, and then your altitude hold. Everything that you'd see in like a commercial jet, basically, or a private jet, uh, in this airplane, and it integrates perfectly with all this equipment here. So today, I'll show you guys how it flies an approach. So the weather right now at Daniel Field, 340 at 7. So come in here, uh, from the main page here, procedures, approach. Approach, it already's got Daniel Field, RNAV, 05 LPV. We don't want vectors, TASPI. And then load and activate approach. There you go. Since I activated it, now the airplane's turning direct to TASPI, because that's the initial approach fix that I, uh, I put in for it. So we need to be at TASPI at 2,700 feet. The really cool feature of this autopilot is that it has a VNAV function. So a lot of times you're not actually going to use VNAV, you'll just use your vertical speed. Um, where VDAV comes in handy is when you're flying without ATC uh, direction, because ATC will usually give you your altitudes and headings and vectors to final for most approaches. However, uh, if you get an arrival, like a complicated arrival, and they have altitude restrictions, that's all in the GPS, and it will load those altitude restrictions in, and you can use VNAV to exactly hit those altitude restrictions. So it's basically exactly what it is, vertical navigation. Um, so it'll calculate your top of descent, all that, and I'll show you guys that here. So right now we don't have an arrival in, we have an approach in here. Um, and again, we have to be at TASPI, at or above 2,700 feet. If look at the iPad here, we can also see TASPI at or above 2,700. So you definitely want to verify that with a current chart, but at or above 2,700. Now what I can do is come here, set my altitude. We're a little bit early, but I'm just showing you guys. 2,700 feet. Actually, I want to set it at the bottom of my, my lowest cleared altitude. So let's say ATC clears down to 2,000 to send via the arrival on close as an approach. We can set 2,000. I can hit VNAV. I see VNAV come up on the, uh, we call it the scoreboard up here. It's in white, which means that it is armed, not active. So our altitude is active at 4,500 feet. And VNAV is armed, which means when I come into here and I look at my procedure, there it is, TOD, top of descent. It's already calculated. If I come back here, I have time to top of descent, 52 minutes. So in 52 minutes, I need to start descending. And not only do I need to, but the autopilot's gonna do it for me. And it'll, it'll give me an alert in my ear. It'll say vertical track. And then I'll see this, uh, I'll see a, a magenta chevron come down. And then you'll see this um, actually intercept and uh, track that vertical course down. I'm just going to sink my altitude back up to 4,500, disengage the VNAV, uh, just because we're a little bit early for that, don't need to do it. I've flown in uh, straight, thick IMC in this thing, and it is just a pleasure to fly. I don't feel like I am uh, stressed or oversaturated. It's just, it's perfect. It's really, I love the G5s. They're so easy to fly. This, uh, whoops, this GTN 750 is amazing. Uh, great engine monitor in this aircraft. Uh, it is truly uh, a joy to fly, this, this, this airplane. But it does come at a cost. Everything in aviation, you guys know, is expensive. So I'm going to tell you this final number, and some of you are going to go, oh, my God. But um, it's actually not that bad. So the price of all the, the autopilot, the servos, the installation, labor, everything, out the door, this autopilot costs $18,480-something dollars. Um, which we were expecting about $20,000, so it came in a little bit under that, which was nice. And if you're watching this video thinking, oh my God, that's just insane. Um, it's not cheap, I get that. But um, the value of the plane did go up. I mean, the value of this plane is continually going up. Uh, for what I paid for this aircraft, uh, I fully expect to be able to get all that money back out of the airplane. This is a low time engine, fantastic panel. Uh, 
looks halfway decent and now it is set up with the the best autopilot you can get pretty much and um i just it it's an investment that i think we'll be able to get back out of the airplane um so that's how we justified it and it also helps that i am a partner in this aircraft so we were able to split some of the costs so you know that makes it a little bit more affordable so yeah uh next thing for me a lot of people ask if i'm going to be a cfi uh, i would really enjoy being a cfi i love teaching i think i would be good at it um, i'm very passionate about aviation so um i really really would like that but i don't think that's the next thing for me um i do work full time uh and i have a family to support so it's not like i can quit that job and then become a cfi and i want to be able to if i have a cfi be able to give then you know the required amount of time to the students i don't want to have to be uh stressed and tired and things like that so I, I just don't think i could be the best cfi for a student right now and that's why i'm not pursuing it my next thing i'm going to do is my commercial multi so i'm waiting until next year to do that just financially and uh, time wise the instrument rating and the commercial rating were this year it's a lot of work a lot of time studying and uh, a lot of money so uh, just taking taking a breather then recover a little bit from that and then first of the year we'll start looking at get my commercial engine um give me my commercial multi-engine rating next bit of news is that i um i'm now an angel flight pilot so if you guys aren't familiar angel flight provides free transportation to individuals in need for medical treatment so uh the, I mean, it could be anything folks with uh cancer that need to get to uh doctor's appointments that can't afford to travel I saw some heart transplants on there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things. Uh, I have a my first flight scheduled for this coming Wednesday, actually. It's actually a, a burn victim who I'm flying to, or picking up from one of his doctor's appointments and flying him back home. So uh, it's a 5013C uh, charity, so you can write off your expenses, things like that, but it's, it's completely free to the patient. It benefits the pilot because we get to feel good about ourselves and we get to fly, build hours. Uh, so it's really an awesome way to build time and give a little bit back um and that that just, i don't know makes me feel super good everyone you know says oh thank you thank you it's like it's almost a selfish thing because it makes me feel so good to do it that um i don't know it just it's like it's i think it's a very mutually beneficial way uh to fly so i'm gonna do that uh and there's tons of missions they're always needing pilots so uh you know if I can do that and write off some of these expenses, that just helps me even more. Um, and like I said, I get to fly and meet new people and help people out. And I'm really excited about that. So next Wednesday is my first time doing that. Um, it's a really cool, cool organization. I talked to the people there on the phone and they, they were so grateful and seemed so nice. And it really makes me feel happy to be able to do this. So that's the next thing for me. All right, guys, back to the flight here. See on the iPad. Um, we do have a warning area here. That's not going to be a big deal. It goes up to 2,000 feet. It's just a warning area anyway. Um, not worried about that. We'll be above it. But um, we do have 2,600 foot class delta here for Augusta. And I want to go around that. And we're not talking to ATC today, so I'm just going to avoid it completely. I think I'm going to... So here, we'll do this. We'll fly to Beans here. I'll move that here. Beans. And then we'll just add that before here in the flight plan so we'll go to insert before direct two beans activate that's what i want all right so now we are direct to beans that's going to keep us clear of the class delta we'll go beans to taspi beans and then we'll activate the approach to taspi oh the, the other part about having an autopilot you guys and i flew this plane to florida with my parents, I took my parents down to see my sister and I got to see my nephew and my niece and my sister and my brother-in-law. And it was amazing, uh, just a great weekend. I have um, had just a horrible month personally, just just horrible. So it was great to take my family down to, uh, uh, to see them and I got a break and got to just hang out with my niece and nephew. I have two kids of my own, but uh, it was really great to see them. Anyway. We flew down to Florida, and um, holy cow, was it nice having an autopilot. It was amazing. I mean, I was able to kind of, you know, move my seat back, look out the window a little bit more, 
and it just it reduces the workload so much you are just able to monitor the airplane and it flies for you uh, it makes a briefing approaches a thousand times easier it makes taking amended clearances which I got two times on that trip they amended my clearance uh, you know writing down amended clearances it just so much easier right and I hand flew my first 500 and something hours now uh, in IFR in IMC all that I did it all I hand flew the plane so I know I can do it um, but I'm telling you it's a lot easier with the autopilot actually when I picked up the airplane from the autopilot install or ADM you could argue but uh, I flew this thing in straight IMC on the way home. It was high ceilings, but uh, I took off and got a pop-up IFR clearance, and they took me right up into thick IMC all the way home, and I shot an approach with this thing, and it was amazing. Uh, obviously, no big deal if the autopilot fails. I could just hand fly the damn thing, but right now, what we'll do is we'll get we'll get ahead of the airplane here. So Daniel Field, the ASOS is 13527. We'll get that put in here. Load that. That's where we'd go and come to. 12305 is our CTAF. Augusta approach is 126.8. We'll put that in. We're not going to need it, but why not? There. I will say the only thing I'm not comfortable with yet on this uh, uh, autopilot is the missed approach procedure. So obviously I read the AFM, went through that. The missed approach procedure, you hit the go around button, uh, flight director goes up, and then you just full power and things like that. But it seemed aggressive to me. When I hit the go around button, I mean, it pitched up. And I, it just seemed uh, unnecessary amount of pitch, which you know, that's your most vulnerable uh, part on takeoff is when you're pitched really high up, you had a low airspeed, you lose an engine, uh, that's been stalled territory. So I don't like to pitch this airplane up to you know 15 degrees. It just it, it seems excessive. So I didn't like that. So I, I got to come up with a new flow on my go around procedure. I think it's going to be something where I just disengage the autopilot hand fly the initial part of the missed approach procedure i was like to say i have the first part of every missed approach procedure in the entire country memorized that's climb <laughs> so the first part of the missed approach is climb straight ahead always so uh, you can do that by hand at the at that point your gps will tell you to unsuspend or ask you if you want to unsuspend your missed approach make that decision hit it and then it'll fly the missed approach procedure for you so all right guys i'm gonna turn off the camera for a little while here and we'll uh, get back with you when we're getting ready to load the approach I'll show you guys how to do that in the GPS. six minutes from TASPI and about a minute and 45 seconds to top of descent here so I'll walk you guys through how to use the VNAV feature so again uh, the approach here has us going down to 2000 at Kaboom and 2700 at TASPI at or above so assume ATC cleared us down to 2000 this would not happen we're on an approach so they would just clear us for the approach but simulating an arrival so set 2000 and our altitude pre-select here. Again, we are altitude 4,500. We're a minute 14 from top of descent. Now, I've set my altitude. Now I need to tell my autopilot how I want to get down there. So I can either have it hold an airspeed on the way down. Not common. I don't know if I think anyone ever does that. Try to hold an airspeed going down. Vertical speed, which is really common. It just said vertical track. Uh, so I can set a, a, like a 500 feet per minute descent, which I like. Or I can come in here and hit VNAV. If I can hit VNAV. I see the light pop up above it. I come over here to the scoreboard, boom. I do have a white VNAV meter that's armed. And there is the uh, magenta chevron, which is the glide slope, not really glide slope, but the path, the vertical path down to 2700. Should engage, now, boom. VNAV engaged, now Alt V is armed. So Alt V means it's altitude, and then the vertical track is what it's going to use to track to, to intercept the 2000. So, VNAV is now engaged. I can feel the plane coming down. The plane just pitched down. I'm going to, well, I'm going to need to reduce the power because it's already a low power setting. But now all you have to do is manage the power and the airplane. But it is flying direct to TASPI and it's going to cross TASPI at uh, 2,700 feet. 
Daniel Field, Mooney 7, Minor 8, one more, about 12 miles to the south, we'll be uh, flying uh, the practice r and to 0 5, so it'll be about a 10 mile final, 0 5, Daniel Field. Alright, assume ATC told us back to Aspie, then cleared for the Harnav 0 5 approach into Daniel. That audible tone there that you just heard was 1,000 feet to go to 2,000. We do have a current altimeter setting. We'll get it one more time. 1333 three, three. Zulu. Wind 350 at zero 07. Visibility 10. Here comes our current condition clear. right now. Temperature 09 Celsius. Dew point minus 02 Celsius. Altimeter 3028. Remarks. Okay, so we have the current weather. Airplane's making a perfect turn. Now we're going to arm the approach. Now I have Alt V armed for 2000. It's not going to go below 2700 here because it knows it can't go below 2700 until it passes task speed. Now it will go below 2700. I see a white diamond, which means our right, the light path is going to arm. 2500 feet, 20 miles to the north. Inbound full stop going to overfly and make a left face to 34. And Daniel Field. Traffic Mooney 790811, 10 mile final, runway 05, Daniel. All right, everything's looking really good. I like my speeds, I like my temperatures, my altitude is good. Even though the autopilot's flying, I'm verifying everything. I, I know that I'm allowed to go below 2700, can't go below 2000. Minimums here are 661 feet. I've got a, a glide path indication on both G5s, which is nice heads out the window because we are VFR. And this is something I've not done before. I've not used the VNAV to get down to an altitude and then have it transfer over to the glide path. I'm assuming it would just be a smooth transition, but uh, definitely going to watch it. All right, bring the landing light on because we're getting close. I like everything else right now. We're already on the tank. We're going to land on, so gas is done under carriage to go. Mixture and prop to go. Switches to go. Seatbelts are on. And Daniel Field traffic, Mooney 8115, mile final 05, both dot Daniel Field. Okay, six seconds from Kaboom, we're going to turn in. Daniel traffic, Skyline 8, roll me off. There's our turn. Our VNAV should stop here at 2000. It did. I've armed the approach. It should hit glide path here. There it did. Now my altitude restrictions are gone because I've armed the approach. And it captured the glide path and we're coming in. So I need to slow down. All right, time to focus now. Yes, yeah, so I'll take a while under carriage to go. Mixture and prop. Mixture's full, prop done. Switches and seatbelts to go. There's gear speed, gear's coming down. Down locked, pulled and indicating. Power is back where I want it right now. Two notches, one, two, fuel pump comes on. And we're still on the autopilot fly. Usually I disengage it, but I, it's VFR. I want to see how it does. A little bit off the center line here. Yes, undercarriage down, mixture prop switches, seatbelts, final gups check. We're good to land, but two notches of flaps left. Yeah, it's a little bit off center line, but that might be this approach too. I didn't check it. Oh, final approach course offset 276. So there it is right there. So we are direct where we want to be. It's keeping us away from these towers over here. Daniel Field traffic, Mooney 811, three mile final, zero five, full stop, Daniel Field traffic. Alright, we'll go next notch of flaps, one to go. That's the last notch we can do before we get slow. Alright, 1000 for 661. We'll take it down to minimums and we'll disconnect the autopilot. Left hand is on the yoke and my thumb is on the autopilot disconnect button. Ready to go. 500. Yes. Undercarriage, mixture props, switches, seatbelts. Alrighty. One Come mile on. final runway 05. Daniel Traffic, Skyline, they roll me off as the part of the trap pattern to the west, last call, Daniel. And Daniel Traffic, Mooney 811, short final, 05, full stop, Daniel. Alrighty, 820 for 661. Anytime I fly VFR, I see how low you can actually get without seeing the ground. Blows my mind. Alright, there's 90, that's where I want to be, right about here. We'll go 80 over the numbers, so we're still slowing down, perfect. Electric trim's doing its thing. 700 for 661, there's 680, and there's 660, autopilot disconnected.
Okay, gears down, gears down, zero five confirmed. We're landing. Flaps come up, we'll roll this down to the end. No need to waste the brake. The pump can come off, the rest will do when we get off the runway. guys back here at home and i uh, realized i forgot to film an outro hope you guys enjoyed that content just a brief tutorial of the gfc 500 if you did like it don't forget to like and subscribe you can follow me on instagram if you want to at tommy flies a lot and we'll catch you guys in the next one peace